Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about 1884 and what went wrong in 1844. Now you may have heard about the great disappointment in 1844 when people were waiting for the second coming of Christ. There was a lot of people who had made a lot of life changes decisions based on that 1844 date and the second coming of the Messiah. But in this video, which is the excerpt from a video we did proving that the Third Testament is real, we uncover the errors that were made back there in 1844, showing you that it wasn't the king's decree that was supposed to be used to make the calculation from the book of Daniel, but it was supposed to be the actual temple construction dates that were supposed to be used. We're also going to go and show you what happened in the correct date. 1884 and how the Messiah actually did return in 1884. So go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already as Daniel's timeline is unlocked before your eyes. Now, let's get back into 1884. I'll show you something here. Do you remember what they call the Great Disappointment? 1844. Do y'all remember that? Alright. So, now I'm looking at a video over here. It's called Amazing Time Prophecy 2300 Days. Uh, I think his name was John Miller or something like that. Had went in to use it. William Miller. William Miller had went in uh, using Daniel's prophecy and made a determination that the second coming of the Messiah would take place on October the 22nd, 1844. And apparently a lot of people um, paid attention to these guys and a lot of other uh, religious groups uh, spun off because of what this William Miller had done. But the thing is, he made an error. And, the, and he made a couple of errors back there in 1844. And I could make this video called What Went Wrong in 1844. But you know what? We're going to keep this video as the proof that the Third Testament is legitimate. We're just going to use um, this video explaining this 1844 in order to show you uh, his error. This is he, he's talking about the 2300 days of Daniel that you hear about over there in Daniel chapter 8. But the problem was that they started this date based on the decree given by King Artaxerxes of Persia. King Artaxerxes of Persia. Now come over here. Let me show you this. This right here is coming from the time chart history of the world and this is a picture taken out of that book and you can see right here this is Artaxerxes the one Artaxerxes the first that this decree was made but when you come over here to the scripture over here in Ezra chapter 14, I mean, over here in Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14, you see that there was actually three different commandments or three different decrees to rebuild the temple. Cyrus was the first individual that gave the decree to rebuild the temple. Let me jump over here and show you. Up until this point, this is this is uh, Nebuchadnezzar over here. You have uh, Darius, oh, not Darius, but Belteshazzar, which was right here in this area. That's the individual that saw the handwriting on the wall as he was drinking from the uh, holy uh, uh, vessels there. Him and his concubines and his wives and all those individuals drinking out of the gold goblets or whatever and saw the handwriting on the wall. He was conquered that evening by Cyrus, who took over the kingdom. And then you see this line coming up out of here what that is is the children of Israel or the Judah or Judah was actually sent back to Jerusalem they was actually released Cyrus came Cyrus when you look at the first book of Ezra when you look at the first chapter out of Ezra, Cyrus made a decree in order to release the Israelites there out of captivity. That's when they ended. You see right here, they had 70 years of captivity, which ended in the year when uh, Cyrus took over. And he gave the first decree in order to uh, release the children. And then you had Darius that gave another decree. 
without going through all of the book of uh, Ezra, you had this Darius the first over here who had to give another decree. And the reason why he had to give another decree was because he had actually stopped the building from being built. You had some people who uh, didn't want to see the temple being built by Judah and they went in and the Bible says it weakened their hand. It, it, they, they made it difficult for them to build the temple. They even wrote a letter to King Darius and told King Darius, uh, are you aware of this temple that's being built over in Jerusalem and how how much trouble this kingdom has made for uh, Babylon and everybody else in the past and they told him to go in and search his records and see don't they find in his records how Jerusalem had been troublemakers and sure enough Darius went in and found in his records that Jerusalem had been troublemakers and so he halted the building from being built well then and later on, uh, when it was uh, brought to his attention that Cyrus had made a decree for the temple to be constructed again by the law of the Medes and the Persians, you know, whose laws can't never, you know, be erased once they're said, he had to make the decree, the decree again for them to start rebuilding the temple. And he did just that. He made another decree. That was the second decree. You don't really find in the scripture when that decree was made. But you find that it was made. All right. So that was the second one. And then over there again, you have even a third time that a decree was made. And that was by Artaxerxes the first. Now, herein is where Miller uh, made his his error is that he chose Artaxerxes in order to to base all of his calculations on when the second coming would be or when the temple would be cleansed was based on the Artaxerxes based on Artaxerxes decree. Now it makes sense because he was living during that time of if he had chose Darius he would have been about 50 or 60 years too late and if he had chose Cyrus he'd have been about a hundred years too late. So of course he chose Artaxerxes in order to to make the decision on which which uh, decree in order to use for its calculation but here's my argument and like I said this is genuine so you you have to bear with me a little bit is that what difference that is does it make that he was basing uh, these calculations that you read about over there in Daniel talking about these 2,300 days? What difference does it make that you're having this information coming from a king? So what? It's just a king saying some words. What difference does that make? Do you think that our father in heaven, do you think that the most high would change his plans based on something that Donald Trump said? I mean, do you think that Putin could come out and make a decision and all of a sudden, the, 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 all the future is going to be changed based on Ahmadinejad or Kim Jong Il or somebody. These are these are just people, and you know the, you you can't expect the world to 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 uh, uh, or the Father's plans to be based on these people. And I wouldn't think that the Father's plans will be based on Cyrus, Darius, or Artaxerxes or any other person. But what do I think that it should have been based on? Well, let's come over here and let's look back at the scripture. Right here in verse 15 of chapter 6, he says, And this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. Now, this is a little bit of confusing right here because these are two different Dariuses right here. Come back over to your picture. You had Darius the first way back here. You had Darius the second way back here. And for some people who are maybe not so familiar with the scripture and may want a little bit more proof that 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 is not the same Darius. You come over here. You come over here to the book of John chapter two, verse 20. And it says, then said the Jews, 40 and six years was this temple in building and wilt thou rear it up in three days? This is talking about the second temple and the Jews are talking to the Messiah who said, think it's up there in verse 19, Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. They thought he was talking about the second temple, but of course he was talking about his body. But the point is, is that down here they said it was 46 years building a second temple 
46 years building the second temple. So when you come back here to this image right here, looking at these kings right here, this is Darius the first. If it had been 46 years for them to complete the temple, the temple would have been completed all the way back over here during this time. And Artaxerxes would have had nothing to do with it because the temple was completed. No, it was this Darius over here in which the, the temple was completed. And if you start to calculate the 46 years, you have to add about 17 years in here from the time Artaxerxes gave the command. And you have to add some of the time over here where Darius the first had gave the command. And even the, some of the time over here where Cyrus had gave the command. Add those all three up and you're going to get 46 years. But my point is, is that it was finished over here with Darius the second. Right, going back to verse 15, he says, And his house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which is in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. All right, so let's come back over here and look real close at this Darius the king individual right here. The second king. All right, this is, again is the time chart of human history. What it's saying here is that Darius the second took the reigns. He started reigning at 424 B.C. And he reigned from 424 to 405 B.C. All right. So let's see what happens if we ignore all of these words from these other kings and start looking at the actual dates here. Because when you come back over here and look at this thing, they started dedicating the house here. They started sacrificing lambs there. They started doing Passover again there. And if you know anything about the Mosaic law, you know how important it is for the Passover. That's when the children of Israel left Egypt. They, they left Egypt right after the Passover. You remember that? It's extremely important for the for Passover and for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so this is what they started doing right after the, the temple was finished. So you have the temple being finished. You have and all of a sudden you have the the uh, the Passover and the other sacrifices being made and my point is is that that is when the date they should have they should have started that's what went wrong in 1844 is because they were going based on the king instead of going based on what actually happened and that was the temple being dedicated and the uh, feast starting to happen again Remember, that's where it started all the way back there uh, with Nebuchadnezzar is that he took all of this stuff away. And the reason why they couldn't have the feast anymore, that's what started some other cycles that you see about there over there in Daniel talking about the uh, the 1,290 days and the 1,235 days. But we'll take care of those in another class. Right now, we're going to calculate this date right here. All right. So now let's come over here and let's get let's let's do it right. They got it wrong back then. 1844. Let's see if we can get it right up here in 2020. All right. Now, look here. You have uh, 424 when Darius the second took over or took the reins. You got the book of Ezra, uh, the book of Ezra saying that the house was finished on the third day of the month Adar which is the sixth year of Darius the king. But look at this point right here, the month Adar, right? He didn't say month uh, September, November, December, which are the Gregorian calendars. He said Adar. This is the Hebrew calendar. And when does the month Adar fall? That's actually the 12th month. That's the 12th month. That's the last month of that year. And then you come down here, and when does Passover start? Passover is the first month. Passover is the first month. This is really important to understand. It's a little bit tricky here, and I know a lot of people don't keep up with these feasts, and they're not familiar with those lunar, the lunar months, but you're talking about the sixth year in the twelfth month, but this is actually the seventh year and the first month of the seventh month year the first month of the seventh year that they are actually starting to do Passover again the first month of the seventh year all right so now let's come in uh, let's look back over here so where you have uh, 424 instead of six years you're going to go seven years I'm slowing down because that's extremely important so now let's put this in a calculator uh, BC 424 so negative 424 
and then we're going to add seven years and that's going to take us to the year 417 okay now we're coming over here to Daniel's prophecy let's jump over there or let's look at something right quick you have these 2300 days that you see over there in Daniel chapter 8 they're supposed to be when the temple is cleansed let's go over here and look at that okay look at over here Daniel chapter 8 verse 13 let me read the verse uh, it says, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation, to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and threescore days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. All right? Now, in my in, in my Bible in here was odd I had in my um and I'm sure in your reference Bible too all right for the word cleansed it actually has delivered when it looks for when it's giving you a translation it has a T for word translation when it gives you the word uh, for for cleansed it says delivered so what that's saying is two thousand and three hundred days then shall the sanctuary be delivered and that's why these people were waiting for the second coming of the Messiah is because they were waiting for the sanctuary to be delivered and you see up here where it's talking about the daily sacrifice and such so let's come over back to our calculator and add 2,300 days all right so we got uh, negative uh, 424 plus 7 is going to take us to the year 417 and now we're going to add 2,300 days but wait a minute remember there's always an additional year you have to add because there was no year zero you have to always add an additional year. And what year do you end up with when you put in 2,301 days? 1884. 1884. All right. Now let's come back over to the Third Testament of the Bible. They want proof. I said, for an engineer, for you tell a proof, you tell an engineer you want proof, and you, you ain't gonna tell him what you're gonna get. Later, in 1884, I began to give you my teachings, my teachings. So here is the second era they made in 1844. While they was expecting a white horse to come across the sky with the Messiah riding on it, they wasn't looking for the word of God, but they should have been. Why? Let's go over to Revelations and I'll show you why. All right. So, like I said, it was a second second error that they made. Not only did they give the get the date wrong because they wasn't thinking about the sacrifice or they wasn't thinking about the the the, uh, the temple there which they should have been thinking about. And secondly, they didn't know what they were looking for. If they had got the date right, if they had got 1884 right and they would have knew what they was looking for, it wouldn't have been such a huge disappointment back there. Now, look right here what they was looking for. When it says Right here in chapter 19, verse 11, he says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. Who is he talking about? He's talking about the Messiah coming forth on a white horse. The Messiah comes on the white horse there in Revelation 19. All right. And he says and he says he comes to judge and make war. Then you come down here and you look and you look at verse 12. It says, and his eyes were as the flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written, which no man knew but himself. Meaning did nobody know what name he was supposed to come with. But look down here in verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That's who we're expecting to come. While they were expecting the something to come across the sky in, in on a white horse, what they should have been looking for was the Word of God. And that's what we got here. In the third testament of the Bible, we actually have the word of God coming in 1884. Now, if you don't call that proof, I don't think it can be proved to you.